Hello, welcome to my channel. Lorenzo here. Today we are going to paint Jack Nicholson. This is a practice that I highly recommend because it's about uh, getting knowledge about how to mixture the skin colors. Okay, it's going, I'm going to start with a simple sketch. First, I'm going to show you my brushes. All of them are round brushes. I'm going to use maybe some flat for the background. The colors are titanium white, uh, yellow ochre, camion red, and ivory black. We need to start sketch. Just with white. For sketching, you know, I prefer to use straight lines. I'm placing the top of the head here. The hand is portion here. The left side, the right side. Now I start looking for simple geometrical shapes. Something like this for the whole forehead. Now I'm separating just the the light from the darks. Okay. You see for the eye. I see this uh, overall shape. Okay, inside this shape, it's going to be a smaller shape that is going to be for the eye. Mouth, nose. Okay, I think that would be enough. I mean, for here, I'm going to start just building, building up more details and all the features. Okay, now we're going to start just by mixing two colors, one for the light and one for the shadows. We mix the yellow ochre, cambium red. We add white, and a touch of black. Let's say that we have an orange grayish color. Now, this one is going to be for the lights. We have to decide uh, if we, uh, let's say, turn these colors towards the, the yellow or towards the red, okay? It depends on the, the color scheme that we are, about, we are about to paint. Now, I'm gonna mix another color for the shadow. It's gonna be the same. This color has more black in it. I'm not using any solvent. Let's try. First, we paint. Then, uh, usually, I mean, it's like always, we gotta go back here to make adjustments to the mixture. I think my canvas is kind of dark. Let me fix this. This way. At the same time, I'm just trying to copy this whole shape. Okay. 
don't use too much paint. You see that uh, I, I'm having like a difficulty just to laying down the paint. That's something that I choose this way because I'm gonna st just start getting, uh, start putting more layers. And if I start with thick paint, it's going to be more difficult just to change the color because usually we change the color every time we apply a new layer. Now the shadow. And now with this simple layer, I'm able to see if it'd be better for me maybe to go more reddish with this color or more yellowish, okay, more grayish or more more saturated. I mean, we gotta decide that. I'm gonna go with more red. First, we don't want to go so, I mean, to enhance too much uh, the hue of, uh, the, let's say, the, uh, the purity of the color, okay? Because we need we, to have space for, to put the reddish part of the face. That would be the nose, the cheek, the chin, the upper and lower eyelid, okay? Okay, this color is better. I'm moving my eyes back and forth from the painting to the image. Sometimes I do it too fast just to, uh, to correct the drawing. I mean, the drawing aspect of the painting. I mean, the position of the hand, the eyes and the, the, nose, the no nose and the mouth. Now that we have that, that we have two values. Now we can make another mixture here. It's gonna be more reddish, more pinky. And we do the same here. Like I said, this one is going to be for the cheeks, the nose, upper eyelid, lower eyelid. Now it looks strong, but I mean, when I will blend, I'm gonna lose those dust because it's gonna be so subtle. Okay. Here on the hand would be 
the narrow the knuckles in here. I'm going to paint a little bit of the hair. I use red, black. touch of poker and I have a brown. If you decide to let's say trace the drawing or make the drawing with a grid, that would be perfect. In that case you can go with uh, thick paint just directly. For me I go like this because I need to see a little bit more, but I don't need too much paint because it's gonna be difficult for me if I apply too much paint and uh, my drawing is not correct. I'm gonna go just little by little, I adding more, more paint. I was doing this, uh, looking for uh, triangular shapes, like this, this, okay. It's like a, maybe uh, the, the figure that, that you said, I mean the geometrical shape that I use the most is the triangle. Now I'm going to mix a lighter color from this one. Okay. Now I see the, the parts of the fade that the color is lighter here.
Okay, now I'm going to blend the paint. I use a round brush that is the hair. Its hair is all sprayed out. I mean, you can see it's ruined. It's perfect for blending. I go with with the lights. Then I clean out the brush. And I go with the shadow. Now you can see now it's kind it's close to a skin color. So we can go more reddish, more yellowish. It doesn't have to be perfect. What is going to be, I mean, really very good for your painting. Uh, that's uh, all the values have to be more accurate, as much accurate as you can. I mean, the lights, the mid tones, and the shadow. It's not just about the color. The color is could be more reddish, more yellowish, more grayish. It's not that important, at least at your paint a, a, a blue face, which is going to be so different. Okay, it's not about that. We, you, we just need to be closer to a regular skin color. And we go to the reddish or to the yellowish, depending on the skin color of the person we are painting. Now, it's very simple. It's kind of an orangey, a, dark, a lighter one, and a darker one. Okay? Now I'm going to start using those just small brushes, number zero. All of them, all of all this one, all this one came in a package. I'm gonna use one for with a with, with, I'm gonna use a darker color with this one and a lighter color with this one. Okay, I'm gonna start just paying attention to more details. I'm not speaking about uh, the wrinkles or all of that. I'm only speaking about variation of values. Let's say here there is a little bit of light here. Okay, more light here, more shadow here, something like that. That's gonna I'm going to pay attention to that. To that. And then when I got more of the face, I'm gonna start adding more colors. Little maybe a little a bit of some gray colors, some green. I mean we can have we can get some green from mixing ivory black and yellow ochre. Let's see. Okay. We have this. I mean, I'm paint, I'm doing a simple a simple color, skin color, okay? Now it could be more complicated if we go, uh, if we think about color temperature, if we think about uh, getting, trying to be perfect with the skin color, and trying to, uh, let's say, saturate more the color or gray down the color a little bit more. Don't worry about that too much, okay? Try to keep simple because you can add all of that during the whole process. With this brush, I'm kind of drawing. And if I made a mistake, let's say that with this one, I correct that. And this is like pushing and pulling the paint.
what I'm doing now is just like drawing, not thinking that uh, this moment as uh, like I'm painting, I'm not painting right now, I'm just drawing and I have the shade to pencil colors on dark, one light. I'm saying that because here is gonna, it should be more reddish, but I'm, I'm going to add that later. Hola Jaime, ¿qué valor tonal le doy al retrato si está en blanco y negro? No, el valor tonal solo trato, el valor tonal es luz y sombra. Estoy tratando de copiar lo mismo. No. Jaime is asking me about the uh, value scale, the portrait. And I'm just trying to copy that from here. And from, from, from me here, I just see lights, okay? Mid-tones and shadows and darks, okay? There is more, of course, but we uh, try to, we need to simplify, simplify everything at the beginning. And I just keep, I mean, this thing about simplify everything is just to make easier the process, make easier the process. I do that about simplify the shape and all of that during the whole process. And right now I'm checking this. Let's say I'm painting and again and I look I'm watching this angle. Okay. Here I'm watching this shape. Okay. Don't feel afraid even to do this. You can see this shape. I'm doing this because I'm trying to capture the likeness at the same time that I'm trying to get right with the colors. But you can see now that the color is kind of okay. I mean, for me, uh, I, I, if I add some light, some gray is color for some part, that would be ready. I mean, a judge, just light and shadows, that would be okay. I mean, of course, we need more, more paint, more color variations, because the idea is not just to finish a painting with just one color that, uh, from the darks to the light. Ok, Jaime, la foto está en blanco y negro y pinta en colores. ¿Cómo hago para asumir qué color corresponde? Es lo mismo, para mí es un solo color degradado, a luz y sombra. Simple, simple. No, no te complicas mucho, manténlo simple. No, Jaime, ask me uh, how I uh, I'm trying to guess the, what color corresponds to each part. And I'm saying that for me, it's just like seeing uh, something that it has just one color and it has a variation from the light to the shadows. It's like seeing a sphere. A sphere is something that has one color. If you have practiced with painting a sphere, it would be one color from the light to the shadow. That's the same for any face. It's like a, a gray, uh, orange, grayish, light and dark. That's it. Keep it simple. Keep, try to keep this really simple. I mean, we add does this uh, reddish version to paint uh, the reddish part of the face. As you can see a little bit here. After the blending, uh, I lost a little bit of that. We're going to put, put it back again, all those colors.
over here and doing the same, trying to see just a triangle here. Okay, and this shape. Okay. And little by little, I start adding more paint, more thick paint. Uh, correction, I mean, I add more thick paint just with the lights. Okay, and try to keep the, the, all the dark colors just with uh, thin paint. Until I'm really sure about uh, the position of, of the features. Then I will start applying more thick paint. I mean, speaking about the dark color, okay? Because obviously it's kind of difficult to Manipulate uh, dark colors. Like it's, I mean, it's going to be difficult always. It's not a matter of how much experience do you have. At that, at that part, it's, it's going to be the same always. I mean, for me, it's difficult just to let's say go with really thick paint directly. And I, I, could go, I could go with really thick paint if I just paint maybe a lighter uh, color skin without this contrast, this high contrast. to add a lighter color. I'm using another brush I have. This is the third one.
Now that I'm going to paint this part, I'll go with a reddish color. When I'm watching this part, I'm painting this part, I'm doing the same, and you see this, I am angle here, angle here, angle here, and see this whole portion, okay? Uh, it's something that uh, I, uh, I change, let's say, my, uh, uh, let's say I switch for watching the image, uh, thinking it was just a flat, a flat image, a two D dimensional image, and then I switch to think that if I'm facing a uh, painting a three dimensional image. I gotta switch between those two in this way. One is let's say for making the volume, and the other one is for having uh, correcting the drawing, correcting the position of the nose and all of that. Uh, and I do that constantly during the whole process. Okay. Just trying to paint this reflection here. It was kind of difficult to know exactly what it is, but let's see it's here.
Okay, I'm going to blend. This part is going to be reddish. Okay. Remember, it's going to be the same for any face. Okay, check the nose, the half of the nose. Okay, all this is going to be reddish. The upper eyelid, the lower eyelid. The chin, we don't see too much of the chin here, in a way.
even for painting this small part, I'm always checking about uh, geometrical shapes. Like here, this this is gonna be a negative space here. Okay, it's kind of easier just to copy this instead of trying to think that we copy fingers or we simplify the, the, the form into flat shapes. It's gonna be the better. Okay, now let's go to paint some wrinkles because I'm making a younger ver version of technical song. Okay.
Okay, in this way, little by little, we are adding more thick paint. It's like uh, making a sculpture. We're molding all the paint. I'm not using any solvent, just pure paint.
Okay, mm, this part is really difficult. Okay, I'm trying just to put the light and compare. I think it's okay, but I think I gotta move them a little bit to the right.
This is a number of zero zero. I'm going to paint this clear here. Now, definitely, this part is going to be more difficult because there are a lot of zero values here.
makes him ivory black, right? I'm going to the be I wanna go to go darker here. That was too much. That's what I love about this Swarm palette. So few colors and easy to make the mixtures for the skin color, for any skin color. I mean, the key for me is just keep the mixture simple. Don't overthink about the skin color. I mean, we all know that there are so many variations that the skin color has some transparency, some greens, violets, and all of that. Sometimes we need all of those colors. Sometimes we don't. I have seen so many amazing paintings. And when I try to see all those color shifts, there are so few, and usually the painting is really amazing uh, because it's the value control. And there are, of course, another paintings that have all value values and all the variation of the skin, and, and they play with temperature. Uh, a lot of things, okay. The idea about this palette is that you have something simple, and on top of this, of course, you can add more. So at least uh, this is gonna be a basic knowledge that you can use to add more color variations if you want. Okay. One thing that you, you need to consider is uh, you can just saturate the color a little, a little bit more or gray down, it's up to you. Uh, for this palette, uh, the black is really important because with black, that's the only way that we gray down any color. But if we want just to a strong color, if you use this black, we have a really orangey face.
be careful with the edges. If I have this edge that is, this portion is very sharp, definitely this portion is gonna, I'm going to blur the portion. I cannot keep just a sharp edge just from the top to bottom. It's not okay, it looks like it adds just some hardness to the paint. Let's continue with the hand. Then I'll uh, way back, way back to the face. Okay, oh, one more thing I just wanted to give more contrast here. I'm going to paint it the hand. The fingers are going to be reddish, really reddish. Pinky. I'm going to prepare a uh, green. I mean, it's not going to be strong green, but with yellow ochre and ivory black, you have uh, a green. And adding this green here because I just want to, the knuckles just to look more reddish. If I add green. Obviously, because of the contrast, I mean, it's not like a strong green. The good thing about this sort palette that is with ivory black and yellow ochre, we have almost almost a perfect green for any skin tone. You can see how I mean for me this color is really. Perfect. If 
it works perfectly anywhere. If you let me add a little bit more of the face. Can you see? You, you cannot even notice its presence, what which is really really good. Okay, we we'll continue with the hand. Mm -hmm. Now let's go back. Let's go back to the screen. Okay, let me clean out my brush. You can add this one here too. The fingers, but leave yours some portion for the reddish color, the knuckles. Okay. So you can add a little bit of green. Okay. 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 Let, 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 let's say that you can paint the whole and green, and you add yours. Red here, here, here. Let's add some light. The group, uh, if you can, then, uh, it's always a uh, a good idea, just take a picture of the painting and the image together. You can just uh, convert the image to a black, the painting to a black and, black and white painting and compare both.
screen your eyes all the time. I screen my eyes, I can see clearly just the light. Now you can add more thick paint if you want, a lot if you want, but you, you have to mix it almost perfectly. You can put a lot, I mean, it's, sometimes it's okay, sometimes it's not, it's not, it's not a rule. You see it, all the paintings in my channel I have. Uh, usually I don't apply too much, too much impasto. 
but sometimes I feel like I have to. And this is not too much, I mean, small brushes. With these small brushes, it's kind of difficult just to take a lot of painting from the palette and put it on the canvas. But one thing that with a lot of a lot of paint, we can create the effect of these wrinkles. Let's add a highlight here. Now we always gotta check where is gonna be the, the lightest light. We have to keep an order, okay? We cannot put just light here, light here, everywhere. It has to be just one, two spots on the face that has the strongest highlight, usually on the nose and the cheek. Keeping all my brushes with different colors. That's why it's so important just to use different brushes. You can come back. You can uh, come back to any color, to any mixture, anytime you want, anytime you need.
Give me just more brush. Clara need, needs a little bit of light here. Okay, now the hair again. to be a little bit of background. Now I'm going to use a little bit of linseed oil. Now the hair. Mm -hmm. I squint to my eyes and just see the black parts of the hair. I go first there. You can see here, really black here. I haven't used any solvent during the whole process. Now I add added a little bit of solvent for the background and for the hair. Now some white hair. And I use this brush. No, I'm 
I'm going to add. Now you can uh, you can feel that there is a skin color. It's kind of simple. I mean, from the very very beginning, you can see you can you can get the skin color. It's just simple colors, and working from a black and white image. It doesn't matter if you just think that the skin color is just kind of an orange, grayish color. It could be uh, toward the yellow or toward the red. Okay, now you can add more, maybe the process more colors. Uh, there is not too many options, of course, but we can have here uh, a green, like the one I added over here. We can have, we can get, uh, there's, I don't have too much room here. Let me clean up my brush. Okay, we can have half red plus black and white. Can you see it? some kind of violet? It's kind of purple there. Okay, you can use this color for the shadows. Want to prepare more? Here you can see clearly kind of a hard purple violet. Okay. Now you can add more white. Black. Maybe you can add it here to the light. As soon as the, any color is just, uh, let's say, a sort for for the environment, it's okay. If I add, I start adding a lot of this color, it's not gonna be okay. I can leave here, here, a little bit, a little bit over here. It's too dark. I'm gonna light up the color. Go again. As soon as you lay down the color, you're gonna feel that it's right or not. If it's not right, take out the color. Okay? That's exactly what I'm going to do here because I don't feel that it's okay. Perfect. You can see it here, just small portion and here, which that's okay. Now, like I told you before, uh, you can go with this orange without any black. And you will have, uh, let's say, a, a very saturated color. And you see it is so strong. Let me add again a little bit of reddish to the chin, to the cheeks, to the cheek particularly, and to the nose. Did you feel the skin has to be more pinky? Just add more red, white. And that would be pink. Okay, I'm gonna go back again to the whole face because there is some middle tones, those subtle tones that would be the more difficult, that's always the more difficult part. This uh, here, let's say here, I have some, you can see, 
there is more more shadows here ups and downs okay. just a few paint not too much paint now Screen your eyes a lot. Always check the proportions. Always check the shape. But I mean, the shape, the shape. I don't want to make more lines on top of this. Always checking the same. But from the beginning to the end, from time to time, you gotta check again and again. That's the only way to be sure that nothing has moved too much. Because we're trying to keep, I mean, at the same time that we're working with color, we're trying to keep um, the value right. We're trying to, I mean, get the likeness, yes. When getting the likeness, it's gonna, it's, it's gonna be always uh, an issue. I mean, there's a lot we have to, practice a lot for that. I don't know the color of the, the colors of his eyes. Maybe they are blue, green, brown. I think I don't know why why I think he has brown eyes. I'm not so sure. checking everything because sometimes some mistakes they just appear at the at the very ending. Always checking values. Okay. I just saw here this part that is it was too light, this portion. Now I think it's better. We gotta be back and forth, back and forth, just checking, checking again and again. Sounds exhausting, yes, the whole process, but it's really beautiful. More beautiful when you, uh, when you see results, of course, and eventually every, everybody is gonna get better at painting because it's something that just knowing, let's say, the rules about color, about harmony, about anatomy, and a lot of practice, and of course a technique. Any technique is gonna help us to just go easy yeah, with the process. Any technique that you, you can practice is gonna be like a recipe. You can follow all the time. 
like right now that I mean, I can repeat this process again and again and again with any painting, with any subject. It doesn't matter the skin color. I'm gonna start with the same. Okay. And then, I mean, at some, at some point, of course, the painting starts just to ask you different things. Let's say that you need to go up and down. You have, you gotta go uh, up, or like running all over the face, just fixing here and here and here. I mean, for that part, there's no way to keep a, an order, but for the very beginning, this it's really good to keep an order and keep, try to keep the order in, the, in your palette. So, okay, so the, you can see I, I try to keep my light color here and the dark color here. I mean, sometimes I'm not, go, I'm not able to do this and I end up with my palette. I just, I mean, every color everywhere. So well, I try, I, I try work really hard. And if I use this brush for dark, col dark colors, I'm not gonna use the same brush for the light colors. It's gonna pollute, okay? Any any light color. And if I use any brush, this one for a dark color, it's gonna milk, it's gonna milk any color. And that's that's one of the reasons that we end up with milky colors. And we say, oh, what happened? Why my, col my, col my colors are not like the strong? And it's not about the painting process. It's not about technique. It's just about to be aware of the brushes and how we use them. I'm really happy with the result. I hope you like it. Of course, if you like it, I mean, press the like button. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more of red to the lip, the upper lip, because it's too dark.
there's a reflection just here inside this shadow. But I'm not gonna go there because it's right now. I mean, if you skip to, to some parts, so a small detail like that. That's okay. Doesn't hurt your painting.
I'm just adding some light to the iris. I don't remember the color of his eyes. I'm checking everything again. Okay, I think it's okay. Mm. Just, I wanna check for one minute. Okay, sometimes, of course, are uh, so difficult to see the mistakes, and sometimes I just to, uh, I go and uh, I go back to thinking on the simple form or simple shape. Let's say this portion here, it was kind of flat. And because it's kind of, let's say, uh, let's say this is a, it's kind of a circular spherical form, and then I add more light. Okay. Sometimes we don't see things. If we don't see things, we have to fill them up. Uh, with knowledge, basic knowledge, of course, about shapes and form, basic forms, spheres, cylinders, cones. Going back to those shape forms in our mind uh, help us just to finish some portions that we already don't, don't see details or we got confused, or maybe we got tired. Of course, uh, about the, the light in the whole face, uh, for me, it's not, uh, maybe I don't see what is, what is the height, the, the height, uh, the lightest light. I don't see anymore what is the lightest light. But not for sure that it's gonna be maybe the nose is always, the nose, like ninety percent of the time, the nose and the uh, the cheek, and sometimes here. Okay, if you already know that, you can just say, uh, "Be sure and go and apply a little bit of uh, light up the, the portions, those portions." Okay. Sorry for all the noises. There's no way that's impossible. I live just in the center of in downtown. There's so many people around. There are also uh, my, not my neighbors, people sitting on the street. OK. 
I'm squinting my eyes again, trying to find, trying to see if I'm missing some volume. Thank you. 
Oops. <clears throat> Okay, I think the sclera here is too light. I'm going to dark it a little bit. It's a common mistake just to paint the sclera too light because we know the I mean the sclera is white and we didn't even see it that uh, and we go up in, so we we'll go directly and paint the sclera white. And checking everything. I know I think this, everything is okay. I feel like this shadow is so strong, but it's at the same time, the image you can see that this. I see that here, okay, and even. I think it's something that it could, it could change the the form or the shape of the eye, if I change it, okay? Maybe a little bit, let me put a little bit more.
ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਫਿਕ ਦਾ ਸੀਤ ਓਕੇ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਹਰਮੀਤ ਲੋਰੀਆ ਨੂੰ ਕ੍ਰਿਸਚਨ ਇਲੇਨਾ ਨੋਰਾ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਸੋ ਮਚ ਫੋਰ ਬੀਇੰਗ ਹੀਰ ਵਿਦ ਮੀ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਸੀ ਏਨੀ ਮਿਸਟੇਕ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਲੈਟ ਮੀ ਨੋ ਬਿਫੋਰ ਆਈ ਫਿਨਿਸ਼ Okay, that's it. Thank you so much. See you next time. Bye.